Okay, mansplaining. What are we talking about when we're talking about mansplaining? Well, we're talking about a couple of things. We're talking about the male brain, which is porous. It's like a sponge. It's very good at uh, absorbing information. And then we're talking about the female brain, which is coated in estrogen. Uh, it's like if you took a sponge and you laminated it, so it's very hard for anything to get in there. Uh, and that's why we have men who know things, and then we have women who don't know things. And our problem becomes, how do we get women to know things? Mansplaining. Now, there's three stages to an effective mansplanation. One, interrupt her. Two, correct her. Three, make her think good. Uh, starting with interrupting her, your greatest tool as a man is your voice. Uh, we see here in this chart that men have the most authoritative, uh, most resonant voice. And as we get more shrill, we move through howler monkeys, uh, we have uh, bats, owls, and then the shrillest animals that uh, scientists know about, which are, are women. Women are the shrillest of all. Uh, and their voices, in fact, hurt the ear to listen to and are so high-pitched they can actually break glass. Uh, next up, you want to correct her. All right, you're a man, so you can lift a big, heavy box. You can eat a bunch of hamburgers really, really fast. She's a woman. She's the female of the species. Um, and any female of any species knows less than the male. Take the praying mantis. The female praying mantis will actually eat the male praying mantis after intercourse. And she do this because she dumb. She think he food. Uh, throughout history, there have been uh, a lot of men who know more than women about various subjects. There's Thomas Edison, who knows more than women about light bulbs. There's, of course, my dad, who knows more than my mom about cars and uh, various meats. Um, and then a classic example, there's Greg from Dharma and Greg, and he knows more than Dharma about just about anything. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, lastly, you want to make her think good. So there's any number of subjects that you can mansplain to a woman. Uh, you can explain to her Lost and your theories about what was happening on that island. Uh, there's jazz and where you think that came from. Of course, there's uh, consent, why consent is iffy. Uh, wood, and how to carry it and what to do with it. And lastly, uh, Hillary Clinton and why she lost the uh, Electoral College. Uh, now I want to end on a, a personal note. My grandpa was a lighthouse attendant. It meant that he operated this lonely old lighthouse all by himself by the sea for years and years. When I'd visit him, I'd ask him, Grandpa, why do you do this? We never get to see you. You live out in the middle of nowhere. He'd say, well, I don't have a choice. If no one's in this lighthouse, the ships don't see the land and they crash into the shore. That's what mansplaining is about. We don't have a choice. If we as men don't mansplain things to women, that women don't know things good. They're boats, and it's up to us to safely guide them to the dock. Incidentally, boats, uh, another thing that women just don't get. Women don't get boats and how they work. You gotta mansplain boats to women and girls. They don't know how they float. All right, thanks guys, thanks so much. Uh, if you have any questions, just hit me up later. All right, thanks so much, thank you, thank you. You gotta like it. When I think about liking and liking, subscribing, I first like and then I go to subscribe. Living, okay? You can swap so the order, of course, if you want and, to. And comment on it like as well if you want to. That now, if you want to like, okay? it's easy. And if you can't figure out how to do it, get off the computer and ride a bike. That.